Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm Acacia, the Executive Director of the Kamloops Chamber of Commerce. And with me today is the newly appointed BC Chamber of Commerce Chair, Elise Laird, who is a member of the Kamloops Chamber with her company, Amplify Consulting. So welcome, Elise. Thanks, Acacia. Thank you for having me here on Zoom. Yes, it's nice that we can still connect this way. Um, so let, let's just jump right in. I've got about five questions for you just to talk awesome. about your role. Um, so tell us about what it is and what the BC Chamber of Commerce does for our province and for our local community. Yeah, well, um, it's it's definitely a different role. So as, as chair of the BC Chamber of Commerce, I really work with our, our directors and our president and CEO to help set the agendas and and the work that needs to be done for the board for the year because we have our strategic planning sessions and we need to make sure that the work that is done in committees is aligning with what we're trying to accomplish as a board overall that we've set in our strategic plan so that's a, a big thing um, for me as in my role as chair but when it comes to bc chamber the bc chamber is really the the provincial organization that represents 125 chambers of commerce and boards of trade throughout of British Columbia, and that includes my favorite, the Kamloops Chamber of Commerce, my home chamber. Um, and so collectively, these chambers of commerce and boards of trade represent 36,000 businesses throughout British Columbia. So really, when you're joining a chamber network, you are joining this network with incredible power to be able to advocate on your behalf to government. So it's, it's a pretty exciting thing. Um, one of the things also with chambers uh, and boards of trade is the work that we do in terms of policy and advocacy so it's it's a pretty exciting network to be involved in and at our 68th annual agm and conference i had the opportunity to virtually give my incoming address and i really talked to the, our network and our membership about unity and community being such an important thing not only just pre-covid times but as we move forward into this um into this these times of everyone says new normal so i'll say it but this new normal of how we're going to thrive and adapt as, as business people and having a chamber of commerce in your corner doing a lot of the work for you while your head's down trying to get things done is a pretty remarkable friend to have and an ally that you can rely on so just being in this role as chair is is awesome it's the weirdest time in history to be a part of this organization i'm sure but i think it's probably the time where we're going to share the value that we have and that we can bring for businesses so it's a good thing as well awesome yeah i absolutely agree with you and i think during covid our network has really come together to make sure that the needs of the business community of the province are being heard at every level of government so um, yeah. thank you for that work and i'm really looking forward to working with you on that so yeah, one sure. thing that's really interesting about you elise is that you are one of a few small business owners that uh, serve on the BC Chamber Board. Um, so what initially drew you um, to get involved with your local chamber? Why was it so important? Well, we have to blame Deb McClelland, I think, <laughs> initially. Uh, well, actually, Deb McClelland, who is the former executive director of the Kamloops Chamber, um, came and actually talked to me and, and asked if, if this would be something that I would be interested in at least looking at. And so then I put my name forward. Um, and at, at, this is one of the great things about the Kamloops Chamber of Commerce, one of many, is that they really look at, at the board and the strategic plan that the, that the chamber wants to um, accomplish. And then they get directors who fill skill sets who are going to help get them there. So um, my role as a small business owner, it was really initially for myself, was all about networking. How can I build the network that I have as a business person within our community, not just to get more business, but to really understand what's happening within the community. Um, I, I look at joining a BC chamber kind of like operating Microsoft Excel. So when you join a chamber or you're on the board, whatever that looks like, I think that you know about 10% of what chambers actually do. And I think most of our members of the Kamloops Chamber and the BC Chamber as well are kind of in that position. So if you take a course in Microsoft Excel, you will learn all of the incredible things that Microsoft Excel can do for you that you never knew, but you kind of need to take the initiative and do a little bit of research and digging. It's very much like with the Kamloops Chamber of Commerce. So initially I got on the board 
because I thought networking. And then there were the educational opportunities. And then I started finding out more about the advocacy work and all of the different things that chambers do and the Camelot Chamber um, specifically does to really help create this really positive business environment so that you as a business can thrive and, and succeed as well. So that's where originally drew me was the networking piece. And then I started going, oh my goodness, there's way more to this than I thought. Um, and that's why I've been on the Kamloops Chamber board for so many years and now moving on to the BC Chamber as well, because it's a network that I love to be a part of. And I don't know how I'm ever going to let it go. I'll have to, though, because I'll be past cherished like in a year or two. So I'll have to figure something else out. <laughs> I'll always be involved, I'm sure. Yeah, once you're involved with the Chamber Network, it's kind of hard to leave it. So I think we're going to we're going to hold you close for a little while. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Brad Tassin and I will be your forever chamber members. <laughs> absolutely. And yeah. we love that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I kind of want to change topics a little bit just to talk specifically about COVID. So, you know, mm -hmm. we know this has devastated the global economy. However, we've seen many businesses embrace technology from live theater performances to at home baking classes. So, what are three trends or opportunities that you hope to see continue or emerge? Oh, okay. Uh, things that I would love to see continue are free seminars. I, I know a lot of us have Zoom fatigue. I mean, I get it. I 100% get it. But I think the opportunity that we have had as, as people, as, as business and organizational leaders, to be able to tap into these free seminars is unbelievable. So uh, Global Leadership Summit, um, Michael Hyatt, Patrick Liancini, Juliet Funt, all of these incredible people in business who have all of these great tools and services to offer are were, have been doing free seminars because they've realized that this is a time where they need to really show leadership and your leadership shouldn't be dependent on whether you can or cannot afford to attend a webinar. So that was amazing. I've, I've learned so much, it's been great. So that's something that I've really, really, really loved. Another thing, which I love and I hate <laughs> is our, uh, the gym that I attend, of course, all gyms had to shut down. Um, our gym started hosting uh, live online classes. And the reason that I say I love it is because I can basically get on my gym gear, I can head outside, I can open the laptop or iPad and then be connected to our instructor. And you could see other people within the class as well. So that was awesome. Why I hate it is because I have, during these COVID times, done way too many burpees, um, kick sits and all these horrible things that our instructors can dream up to try to keep us in shape and motivated. So that's been pretty awesome. And just looking at these small business owners and how they've adapted at these times has been pretty, pretty, pretty awesome to watch. And it, it's been pretty cool. So that's been, those are two things that have, that I've seen um, um, that I've, I would like to see continue a little bit as well. And then I guess in terms of things that would um, emerge, would be really, I think, something that Amplify Consulting specializes in, which is communications and stakeholder engagement. So I, I don't know about you, but I have seen so many businesses who are talking to their stakeholders. So whether that be community, their colleagues and, and coworkers, or their clients and their customers, like never before. So usually when you are a business person, you will kind of do some test marketing. You'll say, okay, there's a need for my product within the, the, within the community that I'm going to operate. You'll do a little bit of test marketing and reaching out. And then that kind of ends, sadly. But we've seen in this time, these times that people are reaching out like never before saying, hey, how can we make you feel more confident to come shop here? What do you want to see? Curbside pickup, all these kind of things. So there's this incredible engagement that's happening. And I would love to see, it, it probably won't continue as, as much as it has currently, but I would love to see that continue and emerge as something that we, we embrace a lot more. And then also the communications part too. Um, the opportunity for people to communicate has been unbelievable as well. Um, having Zoom meetings and conferences, yes, it's a little tiring, but um, the communication has been, has been amplified to can't find a better word, um, like never before. So I think that's been something that I would like to see people continue on. Um, when people are scared and they don't know what's going on, the communications have ramped up, which has been unbelievable. But I think we need to like 
maybe lessen that a little bit, but still keep that op those open lines of communication going because we've got this new platform. We've got this new opportunity. We've like, we've, we've seen each other's living rooms and homes and whatnot. We're a little bit more personable now as opposed to being incredibly professional. So being able to have that communications would be, would be awesome. I would like to see that emerge for sure. I absolutely agree. Just even in our own BC Chamber Network, we've been having weekly calls with all of the chambers to uh, not only bring forward the needs of the business community, but to hear about the work of the network and what other people are doing. And I know it, just with everything going on, it's been extremely valuable for me to hear from my peers. So, you know, I would love to see that continue too. Well, and the um, idea, oh, sorry, the ideas that you can get from that too are just are great. So then you can when you're having those communications, you can say, am I the only one feeling this way? And you realize quickly that you're not. And then also like, we're kind of thinking of doing this. Has it worked in your market? What have been the pros and the cons? I mean, you can learn so much from having just a simple conversation with somebody. You can save yourself hours and hours of work and tons of money by not doing things wrong and learning from lessons from others. So yeah, you're right. Like being able to talk with other fellow executive directors within the network has probably been incredibly helpful because it makes you go, okay, I'm not in this alone either. And that's, that's pretty inspiring too. Let's move on a little bit to the recovery side of COVID. Um, what role do you see chambers and boards of trade playing in recovery? Great, really great question, because I think um, it's sometimes with organizations, they want to kind of jump in and help everybody. <laughs> and I mean, you look at the Kamloops Chamber and where are we at with uh, numbers of, of chamber members? I think it's like 700, 800? Yeah, a little bit lower than 700, yeah. <laughs> okay, but still a, a ton of different businesses. And the Kamloops Chamber can't be expected to help every single one of them individually. So I think when you see that there's a need, you really want to help out. But I think for Kamlet or for Kamloops Chamber, chambers across the province and boards of trade, the biggest thing we need to be doing right now is to be listening. And the reason is, is because we've got our MLAs, we've got regional district directors, mayors, councillors, et cetera, looking for this data and insight from us. And if we're not listening, we're only bringing our perspective. So um, I have the opportunity of sitting, uh, Mayor Ken Christian asked me to sit on the um, Mayor's Economic Re Renewal and Recovery Task Force. And yes, I'm a small business owner and I have this affiliation with the BC Chamber of Commerce, but I don't believe that the mayor wants to hear just how are, how are things going for Amplify because I'm one small business within this incredible city that we live in. But if we as chambers are listening and we're doing these surveys through BC MindReader, for example, then we can actually come back and we can give real time data of what's happening on the ground to help drive decisions and, and to provide that insight. So I was doing an interview with Delana Nishaw the other day from CFJC TV, and she was asking the question about PPE and that being a real struggle for businesses, which is, it is true, absolutely. But when you look at the businesses from our third mind reader pulse check survey, Actually, what the I think it was like 76% of businesses said that their biggest challenge was going to be getting businesses to have confidence to actually come back and, and to shop in their businesses. So that was like by far and away the biggest challenge that they would have. And there were other challenges too, including PPE as well. But when we're able to say, yes, this is a, a, a big issue, but this is actually even bigger. And maybe we need to be focusing over here and uh, some of our attention here. I think it helps political leaders, organizations, and, and those who can, who can create that change, be focused in the right direction instead of going, hmm, I think we need to go over here when everyone's telling you you need to go over here. So listening is, is so critical, and then being able to advocate on behalf of those voices is huge as well. That's going to be the biggest thing that we need to do in the coming weeks and months, no question. Oh, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. And that's really what we've been focusing on at the Kamloops Chamber is yeah. trying to collect that data from our business community to give it to the elected officials and, and our fellow partner organizations who are also planning recovery initiatives and programming too. Mm -hmm. um, so our last question, I want to end it on a bit of a positive note. Um, what BC businesses and experiences are you looking forward to most this summer? 
Wow. I am looking forward to camping with my family. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that. We like to go camping every year. This is going to be um, just an opportunity to get back into the, into the places that we love. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that. I'm a huge gardener, so I've already got my garden planted. I'm looking forward to being outside and hiking. I think one of the things which is so different this year is that obviously there's non-essential travel between provinces. And so to almost kind of go, okay, this is what, where we can be this year. And to really, uh, to really explore British Columbia and just understand how incredibly blessed we are to live in such an incredibly beautiful province is going to be something that we look forward to. Plus scoops ice cream. I'm looking forward to getting a cone, <laughs> going to scoops ice cream. That's going to be fun. And then I guess just like attending, going to the farmer's market. I know it looks a little bit different right now, but going to the farmer's market, going for coffee as you can kind of start expanding your bubble of people that you can be around with friends, because I really miss that, that face-to-face -face conversation. It's just, it's not the same um, meeting virtually or being on the phone. So getting to do those things, just, it's funny because I really want to do the simple things in life. And I think the, the blessing in all of this in, in this crazy situation is that it really helps you kind of figure out what's important to you and realize how, how, beautiful place you live in and how much you really care for your family and friends. So yeah, looking forward to being a very intentional summer of getting together with people as the bubbles increase. <laughs> That's very well put. And I feel that entirely. I think you and I are both uh, extroverted people. And so yes. having to <laughs> meet with people through your computer is not necessarily the same, although we are still happy to have the opportunity to connect. Right. So yeah, this, well, this, pandemic has been incredibly hard on extroverts like you and I. No question. <laughs> well, at least that's all the questions from me. I just wanted to say thank you very much for taking the time to chat with me and the membership today. And also congratulations on being appointed to this role. We're really looking forward to having someone from Kamloops uh, serve in that role. Um, but then also just to amplify the work that uh, the BC Chamber is doing here locally. It's going to be really impactful for us. So Thanks very much and uh, Thank have a great day. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Thanks, Ailey.